Hey, good Tuesday morning, everybody. It's meteorologist Brad Panovich. It's Tuesday, and now we get round two of possibly severe storms this afternoon. Now, a little bit different timing and setup than yesterday, but just like yesterday, we're probably going to see at least one round of decent thunderstorms that could be severe. And today, it's a little bit more straightforward where they're coming from because we can look off to the west. We see this big cluster of storms across the parts of Tennessee, um, basically Kentucky down into northern Alabama. I'm going to pause it right here. And basically, this is what we'll be tracking all day as this pushes to the east. What's interesting is the air mass ahead of it is actually pretty unstable already. And we're starting to see some pretty warm and humid air move up. You can see temperatures in the 60s and 70s. But let me show you the dew points in the mid and even upper 60s. So this is really juicy air, really ripe air for thunderstorms to develop ahead of it. And we've got that strong southerly wind, which is going to continue to bring in that warm, moist air from the south ahead of this system. And so for that reason, we've got that severe weather outlook today. And I'll show it to you real quickly. Um, let me turn off the, uh, the, the, um, the cloud cover here so it's a little bit easier to see. So you can see we're all in yellow, but notice the areas in orange and red off to the south. And don't be surprised if there might be an upgrade to a medium risk in this area. And again, because of the way this thing is shaped, you see a couple tornado warnings over here right now. But you see how it's kind of arced out like this? This is usually what we call a bow echo. So to me, overall, this has got straight line wind risk written all over it. And, you know, when we see this setup, that's typically what we tend to see is a straight line wind risk when we have that kind of bowing shape, looks like a bow and arrow um, on, on the uh, radar and satellite. So that'll be heading our way later today. Now, tomorrow, because this thing will still be moving over us, I'm going to do the two day real quick. You can see as it pushes towards the coast, and this will primarily be late tonight, early tomorrow. Uh, towards the coast so basically the reason you see that low risk up and down the coast is because that same system will be pushing off to the east so let's take a look at that future cast all right this is pretty straightforward there's our system off to the west and this should not be hard to track because you can see it pushing to the east by about noon should be just beginning to move into eastern tennessee about to cross the mountains by one o'clock i expect it to start moving into the north carolina mountains the thing to watch out for is obviously the main line will be dangerous but any little cells that develop out ahead of it. And that's why I think down here you saw more of that medium risk because we could get some isolated cells. But even east of the mountains, that'll be certainly something I'll be watching carefully this afternoon. 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and about 4 o'clock you could see it starting to move across the heart of the area. And embedded in here could be some tornadic storms. Again, that's not the overwhelming threat, but that is a threat in this setup because within the line you can tend to get rotating storms. And you can see it kind of co coalescing into a pretty strong squall line through the early evening. So unlike yesterday's storms, which came through right in the middle of the day, these are going to be more mid to late afternoon and into the evening. This is 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. And you can see it pushing off to the east. And also notice back to the west, the storm's still ongoing. Those should weaken overnight as we get into the cooler time of the day. But this will be the cold front right there. You see it right there? So this will be arriving sometime early Wednesday. So it'll be too cool for severe weather here, but a little bit of time to heat up as that pushes to the east. That's why you're seeing that risk of severe storms there. And I'll show you that as well. So you can see into the overnight hours, these storms that approach look ominous, but then they start to weaken, but some much needed rain. And we'll go into tomorrow morning. You know, this is early on Wednesday morning, seven, eight, nine in the morning. You can see the cold front kind of falling apart. These storms likely down here blocking the inflow as they push to the east. And you can see maybe a skinny line forming right there tomorrow afternoon. That's why you've got that low risk right there. Remember, um, let me show you that low risk again. Day two, right there, there you go. That's why you're seeing that risk because of those storms pushing to the east. And you can see that little line developing and then moving off. But that should not amount to a whole lot. Let's go back and show you a couple other parameters here. That thunderstorm fuel across the air. I just wanna show you how much fuel we're gonna to have today because there's time for instability to build ahead of that line. Um, this is going into about two o'clock this afternoon, three, four. You see the instability here on the right, you see the chart. We're starting to get two to 3,000 cape. That's basically a measure of fuel. When you see anything near 1,000 or higher, you really start to pay attention. 2,000, that's a legit chance. And then above there, it's, you know, we start talking significant severe weather risk. But you can see how it gets eaten up by the storms because this is storm fuel. So as the storms move in, they use it up. That's why you see such a defining line as they push off to the west. Let me quickly show you a significant tornado parameter. Um, again, not off the charts here, pretty low numbers, maybe one, one and a half. 
But one interesting thing is the um, what we call updraft helicity, storms that will rotate. And again, not, a t not really strong rotation in these storms, but you could see embedded in the line there could be a couple segments that rotate. Nothing here jumps off the charts to me, just the fact that some of these storms could have that potential um, to be strong or severe. So again, backing this up a little bit, we'll show you that line moving through tonight into early, or basically late this afternoon into tonight, and then another line forming tomorrow. That's going to be the main driver of our severe weather today. So let's go back to the current conditions. We'll pop everything up here real quickly just to show you. There's our system, and I'll turn the, all the watches and warnings on so you can kind of see them. So that's our system. You can see it back towards the west. That's what we'll be tracking all afternoon as that thing gets closer and closer. It's pretty straightforward. That's what we're watching. That's the line of severe storms, and we'll have complete coverage on WCNC on air, online. Make sure you grab the app. Today's another day to be weather aware. The timing's a little bit different. Think 3, 4, 5, 6 o'clock instead of 11 noon, one, two o'clock. So probably about four hours, maybe five hours later in some instances.